Yo, what's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I want to go over my thoughts on Zenkai, or at least my initial thoughts on how the mechanic is influencing and impacting the game. Um, you know, now that we've had quite a bit of time to play with it online and about one to two weeks to play with the mechanic IRL, I figured it was a good time to go over my thoughts, what I'm thinking, what I'm observing about the mechanic and how it's, um, you know, changing Dragon Ball Super because it is a brand new mechanic. It's going to leave a lasting uh, mark for a long, long time to come until we get the next mechanic. Who knows? Maybe two or three years. But um, anyways, real quick disclaimer. This video is being recorded before the San Diego Regional, so I just want to put that out there that this video is not influenced by whatever happens at the San Diego Regional meta wise, but I really don't think that whatever happened in San Diego is going to really impact my thoughts here in this video. It's not really a meta type of thing that I'm talking about here, but I just want to put that out there. I'm pre-recording this because I'm going on a little weekend trip. So here's your Monday video. But anyways, we'll get into it. If you guys are new here, though, make sure to subscribe, hit that bell so you never miss a video. And if you guys want to support the channel, there are tons of ways down in the description. I'll leave it up to you to pick one this time. Anyways, let's just jump right on into things. My initial thoughts of Zenkai series. The mechanic plays really well. This is definitely a positive of the mechanic. I don't think it is very complicated for players that know how to play Dragon Ball Super. If you know how to play Dragon Ball Super and um, you've talked to people about it, you'd probably say the number one mechanic of the game, whether it's skill wise or just what shines the most about the game is the combo mechanic. And I really like how Zenkai just takes the combo mechanic and kind of evolves it. And um, it does that really, really well, in my opinion. I think that um, a lot of people will say Dragon Ball Super is a very complicated game. I find that hard to believe coming from Yu-Gi-Oh! myself, but I think many players would say that's the hardest card game on the market to, to teach any new player. Dragon Ball Super has its fair share of complications, don't get me wrong, like counter windows are a big thing. The entire step of a battle from counters to autos to combos and who combos first, who combos last, and then uh, damage and all that stuff. There are plenty of complications in Dragon Ball Super, but I still think the game is early enough in its lifespan compared to the big three where teaching people isn't all that rough, at least in my opinion. And again, like I like how this mechanic just evolves in the combo mechanic and adds another layer. But again, it adds another complication, but I don't think it's all that bad. Uh, I don't know what I've been doing with my Z energy is like when I'm done comboing my cards, I've been taking my Z energy and putting it on the outside of my leader so it doesn't interact or interrupt with the rest of my board space because let's be honest, a lot of us don't really like the way that um, Bandai laid out the new game, game mat because it really bunches up the battle area and creates this space like where you would be normally playing battle cards and most decks like flood a board of battle cards. So if your battle area is really only that bunched up, it kind of makes it a little bit clunkier to play the game. So I know a lot of us have been finding alternative areas to place our Z energy. And as long as it's kind of like in a clear cut place where it's not conflicting with other areas, I think it's fine. Like I said, I put my Z energy on the outside of my leader. So it's not in the way of my battle area or my combo area. I even think you can do a cool thing where you kind of treat your Z energy like uh, pendulums and Yu-Gi-Oh, if you're familiar with that, where they sit face up on your Z deck, just like pendulums and Yu-Gi-Oh extra decks. And that way it's like clear to both players how much energy you have. It's right on top of your Z decks or they're actually sharing an area, saving up a lot of board space. I haven't quite started doing that yet, but I think it's a cool way to kind of um, take a game you may have played before and kind of just use a similar thing and keep a clear area. But that was just a little bit tangent. I think the mechanic plays very, very well. I do like that a lot. This next point is not a negative or a positive in my opinion, just something that I've purely observed. So clapbacks are 100% deadlier. Now, if you don't know what a clapback is, I'll give you a short definition. So basically in Dragon Ball Super, at the end of the day, the game comes down to combo power. Who has more combo power typically wins the game. So let's say my opponent has me at two life. They have a double striker of, of some sort. They attack me, they combo all out. Let's say they combo to 100K. Maybe I survive by 105K. I survive by exactly one 5K combo in my hand. And let's just say like my opponent's hand is zero, my hand zero. I actually get to go back to my next turn, which was pretty unexpected considering the game state. Let's just say my opponent maybe had like five more cards in hand and I was able to combo out by 5K. So now I go back to my turn and that's what's called the clap back where I have a potential to uh, beat my opponent when they failed to actually defeat me, right? That's what's called the clap back. So, under normal circumstances without the Z deck, I would be completely reliant on purely my leader swing and possibly any battle cards that I had on board that my opponent wasn't able to clear. But let's just say in this scenario, which is really not that uncommon, my opponent was able to clear my entire board in the process of trying to win the game against me, right? So I have no board, just my leader swing. My opponent maybe has two life. I attack on my leader, cool. I draw a card, my opponent takes one damage. How am I dealing that last damage if the card I drew wasn't a battle card I could play? 
well, no problem. Now I can just access my Z deck because after doing all that battling and comboing, I probably have a ton of Z energy and now I can just reach into my Z deck, play a ginormous threat or even maybe a moderate sized threat. It's still a battle card that I literally just pulled out of thin air, played it and completed the clapback with. So clapbacks, you're no longer gonna really be in situations where you don't have the resources to actually kill your opponent on a clapback. They sit right there in your Z deck. Again, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't have an opinion on that really. It's something I've, I've observed. I, I don't, there's nothing that says to me that that's a bad thing. And a lot of players have said the game has to speed up a bit because we've been coming off some more like mid range control formats. I don't think that's a bad thing either. Uh, I think that the game is only kind of speeding up, not really as a result of the Z, the Z mechanic. I think it's more so because red is just so crazy strong in this new, uh, in this new set. That alone is what I think is really kind of speeding up the game, which again, I don't think is a bad thing. Just one thing that I've been observing. So if you have an opinion on this, whether it's good or bad, drop it down in the comments. Anyways, let's move on to the next point, which is a slight negative and that's color disparity. So this is not like related to the mechanic or how it functions. This is really just related to how the cards were made for this set. And you got to admit, there's a huge color disparity between red, yellow, blue, and then you have green and black on the opposite ends. Like look at Rush Tech Vegeta versus Frieza Resurrected Ambition for two drop 15K Z battle cards. There's just a world of power that separates these two battle cards, even just in the rarity. Vegeta's an SR, you expect it to be really good. Frieza is just a rare. So that power level doesn't have to be there, but you would have thought that going into the first set of Z series, every single color would have gotten some sort of like SR Z battle card that every deck of that color could have played for the foreseeable future, but that's just not how they went about it. And again, it's just pretty clear that there's a big color disparity um, as far as not only the Z deck goes, but the strategy uh, strength goes for all these different colors. Now I could see a counterpoint where some people will say that, oh, Frieza is not the premier Z battle card of green. You actually have to look at Goku and Piccolo faded rival. Those are the quote unquote Z battle cards of green, even though they're, even though they're not really Z battle cards. And I can see your point there because Goku faded rivals operates much like a Z battle card, where you have to, you know, basically pay a Z battle card or a Z energy rather to play it. Yes, I see that. Piccolo Jr. Fate Arrival operates based off how much the energy you have. That also makes some slight sense. But if you want to compare these to even the red Z battle cards or yellow or blue Z battle cards, Goku Fate Rivals and Piccolo Fate Rivals are still worse because one, I have to draw these cards. Not only do I have to draw these cards, I have to draw these cards together as opposed to a Z deck where the cards just sit there. I can pick them up whenever I want. So that's already a downside. The other thing too is, Goku Fate Arrival only costs one Z energy. That is a pretty cheap Z energy cost, but the Z energy is not even generic like every other Z battle card in the game. It has to be green and it has to be a Saiyan Earthling or Namekian, which admittedly is not that hard to meet in green decks. Like you always have a Paragus super combo, but like still they just give you the kind of slap in the face to say, yeah, this Z energy is not even gonna be generic like um, all the other Z battle cards in the game. If you wanna call these greens quote unquote Z battle cards, which again, they're not. So there's a, just a very clear like color disparity when it comes to the Z mechanic. And then the next point is also a minor negative and that's generating Z energy. Now, again, this is not really an issue with how the mechanic works. The mechanic works fine. It's just that the decks that are able to, or how the decks are able to use the mechanic is not equal. So we have SS4 Gogeta. If you guys have played this deck or played against it, you would know this deck is heavily incentivized to combo. You're honestly plussing your hand advantage oftentimes when you're comboing cards with SS4 Gogeta. And at the same time, you're making Z energy, which you know allows your Z energy pool to get out of control. And then you have a card like uh, SSB Rush Tech Vegeta, where it's activate main requires you to have four Z energy just sitting in your Z energy pool. like. That's four Z energy you have to have on top of the two that you use to pay for the card's cost. But that's really not even that big of an ask in SS4 Gogeta or Red Sin because those two decks just generate Z energy for absolutely free. Then you look at a deck like Green Roshi that can't really generate Z energy efficiently until you're on your awakened side. And um, even that early on in the game, you might not be cycling through your world tournament battle cards that quickly. So maybe you'll generate one Z energy a turn offensively if you're lucky, but yeah, there's just a world of difference between like a deck like SS4 Gogeta and a deck like Tur uh, Turtle School. So now I can see if you're Bandai and you're sitting at Bandai HQ and you say to yourself, well, for thematic purposes, we have SS4 Gogeta, one of the strongest characters in Dragon Ball IP. And then we have Master Roshi, an earlier on character. He was cool in the beginning, but he really falls off going into the late game. You know what I mean? So 
with that in mind i could totally see them saying we got to make s4 gogeta a much stronger deck than roshi for thematic purposes i get that but does the gap of power have to be so wide like did s4 gogeta really need to combo with rest mode sands did did roshi uh really need to uh i don't know have to sacrifice his field card to gain double strike or better yet did roshi have to be locked into world tournament battle cards when he plays the weenies to his opponent's board if you guys know what roshi does you know what i'm talking about did that restriction really have to apply when ss4 gogeta literally combos sands for free in rest mode like no it really didn't have to so again like these issues are not with the mechanic itself the mechanic in my opinion works very very well and i guess that leads us into my closing thoughts where i really do like the mechanic i don't think it's imposing any harm on the game at least again in my personal opinion it's just for whatever reason like the design disparity between uh red yellow and blue versus green and black there's just a world of difference and black i mean there's a fair case to be made there because that color is coming off of being one of the best colors for several formats so i can see giving black a break and not giving it any crazy overwhelm stuff or any crazy warp stuff for gogeta xeno to abuse i can see that that's fine but man green has just not been it for a while and i will say over time we're slowly getting better green stuff but there's still just such a world of difference between uh red blue yellow and and green so i don't know guys those are my thoughts on the matter let me in the comments below what you think do you agree or disagree with any of my points thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one